We have been doing work with an engineered cell therapy, a CAR T cell therapy directed against CD19 called CTL019. This is a um, cell therapy that we're hoping will be before the Food and Drug Administration very soon for potential approval and I think uh, uh, at, in front of EMA pretty soon after that. Now this cell therapy is very powerful, it's very good at uh, uh, controlling refractory ALL, but in patients who have very high disease burdens, the T cells have to proliferate to a very high level to kill all the leukemia. That process produces an enormous amount of inflammatory proteins and cytokines that can make the patient quite ill. Indeed, it can be uh, ICU level, uh, intensive care unit level sickness. And so, to get to your tocilizumab question, tocilizumab blocks a particular cytokine, a particular inflammatory protein called interleukin-6, and it turns out that interleukin-6 is a big part of the toxicity reaction of these very active T cells. You block IL-6, and the patient can get better very, very quickly. And I think without tocilizumab, we wouldn't be able to use these cells safely. Yes. So in terms of controlling cytokine release syndrome, um, I guess you could say that tocilizumab always works. In about two-thirds of the patients, uh, the pediatric patients on the trials that I've been involved with, um, the uh, tocilizumab will control the cytokine release syndrome very quickly. In the other third of the patients, it takes a few days. And in those patients, they often receive more treatment than just the tocilizumab. They may get steroids for a short period of time, another dose of tocilizumab, and very rarely another uh, cytokine medication. There's a new medicine now called siltuximab, which directly binds to IL-6. And so in that third of patients that don't immediately respond, uh, they eventually respond over a few days but require more treatment. How we sequence these things is a really important question. So we have the Immunotherapies, which are molecular, uh, checkpoint inhibitors, which really uh, in, in the leukemias is not such an important class of drugs right now. And then, of course, biospecific antibodies like, uh, you know, the bite, blenitumumab, and other molecules like that. So those um, uh, molecules are off the shelf, which means you, uh, uh, pardon me, which means a physician can just prescribe them, um, and you don't have to collect anything from the patient, you don't have to make a cell therapy. Um, the engineered cell therapies are sort of a step above that, both in terms of efficacy, they're more efficacious, but also in terms of complexity and cost, because you do have to make an individual product for each patient. So you'll have to balance access against um, uh, efficacy, and uh, I think it'll take a year or two for uh, all of those considerations to sort themselves out. I think it's a great question, and as we have more and more of these sorts of both cell therapies and molecules available on the market. It'll be interesting to see how physicians choose to sequence them. Well, I think um, uh, I'm most excited about the fact that uh, we've completed a registration trial, uh, that that's uh, uh, been tested globally. So we've done 25 centers in 11 countries, and sort of including a lot of folks in the EU who participated in these trials in pediatric ALL, uh, that will be in front of the FDA in a very short amount of time, and I hope in front of the EMA uh, pretty soon after that.